How do you feel knowing you're the recipient of the Professional Achievement Award? Oh, I feel, I feel wonderful. I mean, Kent State was just so important to me. And to be recognized by an institution that made such a big difference in my life is just a wonderful feeling. I, I am so proud. I have to say, you know, I do have to say that Earl was a postdoctoral fellow in my lab 25 years ago. Uh, and so I've seen him develop into this absolute world leader, going from someone getting, you know, getting training to being a leader, uh, you know, throughout the world in this field has been just tremendously, uh, you know, I'm just tremendously proud of what he's done. Describe yourself. Uh, describe myself, you mean personally or professionally or, okay. Well, I'm a um, professor of neuroscience at MIT, where I had been for the past 20 years. Um, I study the neural basis of cognitive function. I have a um, long-standing interest in how the brain produ produces the mind. Earl is uh, a little unusual and certainly different than most people's stereotype of a, uh, a scientist these days. You know, people think about a scientist as someone who's you know, locked in the lab 24 hours a day and has very uh, you know, uh, restricted life. But Earl is you know, an incredible human being. He's got tremendous outside interests. He's a musician, he has a band, he plays the guitar. Outside the office, well, you know, I've, I'm um, generally a passionate person. When, when I uh, pick something that I'm interested in, I go all the way and I'm a, I feel I'm a very dedicated uh, scientist. I also like I have my hobbies outside the lab. I play music, I enjoy restaurants, I enjoy um, good wine. I mean, generally, I don't believe in doing many things halfway. Why should other Kent State alumni be so proud of him? Well, you know, uh, this dedication to understanding brain function so that ultimately we can help, you know, the millions of people in the U.S. and around the world suffering from brain disorders. I mean, that kind of dedication is really admirable in a scientist. And for someone who, who goes from dedication to actually accomplishment, to actually doing what they set out to do is the you know un a tremendous advance in understanding of, of brain cognition this way I mean I, this is something I think that Kent State should hold up as an example for for other for its current incoming students and for its alumni I like to say that Kent State is what made me the scientist I am today and everything after that was just polish so to be recognized by some place that I considered to launch me to where, where I am today is just, just, and just, I'm repeating myself, just a wonderful, one, wonderful feeling. I want to first and foremost thank my, my wife Marlene. I mean, it's, it's her support for many years now that uh, has gotten me where I am. I couldn't have done anything without, without, without her. Uh, she's everything to me. Um, I'd like to thank my, uh, um, my uh, mentors, Bob Desimone, who is my postdoc mentor, my PhD mentor, Charlie Gross, and importantly, I'd like to thank some people at uh, Kent State. Um, what first got me interested in science was that I volunteered to work in a laboratory in the psychology department. I was hooked from the moment I did my first experiment. I was just, I, this, I knew this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And it was a, a professor in the psychology department, Richard Vidaris, who gave me that opportunity. I was just some undergraduate and he welcomed me into his laboratory and treated me like a scientist from the first day I was there. And that made a big difference in my life. And Dave Riccio, who's a psychology professor, he was, I took his class, he was, and he, he mentored me when I was an undergraduate. He was a, um, uh, he gave me a push in the right direction when I needed a push and, and, and was very inspiring and gave me a lot of critical advice that led me onto the road that I am today.